Today we'll be installing two major upgrades to the Bamboo P1S, and arguably these are the only two upgrades someone should do to their printer, but more on that another time. Next video maybe. We're jumping right into it. With the power turned off, I'll pull the front cover away from the tool head. The fan is at the top of the three primary connectors inside. I'll also disconnect the two cable harnesses from the hot end. You may notice a little printed bracket I have around these connectors. This is a handy little alignment jig you can print to ensure the cables connect back properly. As I mentioned in my previous extruder teardown, it's surprisingly easy to connect these incorrectly. The hot end is held in with two long screws. It uses the larger of the two Allen keys included with your printer, but if you don't have one of those handy, you can use a standard 2mm hex driver. Now the hot end can be safely pulled down and set to the side. The extruder assembly is held in by three primary screws, but we first need to remove the one that holds the cutting arm in place. This one is slightly smaller, using a 1.5mm hex driver instead. It does not need to be fully removed, though it can be. The arm should be held while loosening it as well. Once that's done, the cutting arm can be pushed completely open and out of the way. I'll move on to the primary screws now, all of them being the normal 2mm size. One is located just behind the cutting arm. All three of these screws are the exact same size and length, meaning they can't really be installed incorrectly. Another screw is located to the right, just below the cable connectors. And the last is to the left, next to the transparent housing of the filament detection sensor. We're not out of the woods just yet though. The detection sensor needs to be disconnected. It's to the right of the Bowden coupler. The Bowden tube should also be removed at this time. Pressing down on the coupler and pulling up from the tube will remove it. Just be careful around the fragile ribbon connector for that sensor. Now the extruder assembly can be pulled out of the tool head. I'll take this to the desk to start our disassembly. On the back side of the extruder, you'll find four identically sized 2mm screws holding the plastic plate in place. These four screws can be removed or simply loosened completely and pulled away with the cover. To the left side, you'll find a single long screw. This is your tensioner screw and it needs to be fully removed. Now the tension spring can be pulled away. It has a small metal cap that may fall off, so make sure that ends up somewhere safe. The primary gear shaft can now be pulled from the housing. If you haven't removed it before, it may be quite stuck, and you may want to use some tools to provide leverage to pull it out. It may or may not have a small 8mm ball bearing stuck to the top of the shaft, or it may stay stuck in your housing. Not to worry, your new gear assembly likely included two new ones. I've lined up the old and new parts for comparison. Visually, the only difference you may notice is that the hardened steel gears are black compared to the stainless steel appearance of the original parts. On closer inspection, you'll notice the old gears have some grease on them. You'll want to add a drop of lubricant to your new gears as well. This is the same grease that's included with your printer, not the thermal one though. While my old gear doesn't appear worn, it would certainly look a lot different after a roll or two of abrasive filaments. The hardened steel, however, won't degrade, or wear, well, at least not nearly as much. Of course, this upgrade isn't complete without also installing a hardened steel nozzle as well. Again, the only real noticeable difference here is the color of the heatsink, with the hardened steel being black. Upon a much, much closer inspection, I found that this was probably a good time to change nozzles. My original has worn down over the thousand hours or so I've put on this printer, and there's a noticeable difference on the tip. First, let's get the extruder reassembled. I'll put the first bearing into the shell where the main gear shaft will sit. You may be confused, like I was, as to why there's a second bearing included. As it turns out, that bearing goes into the top shell, but in my case, the old one was still firmly seated, so I'll just use what I have. I'll install the tensioner arm by dropping it over the metal post in the frame. Then I'll pull the arm to the left to make room for the main gear. The main gear shaft can now be pressed into the bearing. The tension arm can then be pushed against the main gear so that they line up. With the extra space this creates, I can drop in the tension spring along with that cool little cap which will sit towards the outside. The tension screw can now be tightened into the housing. Mine was tightened completely down before, so I'll do the same and ensure it's as tight as it can comfortably be. 
The final step for the extruder will be placing the cover plate over top of it. Remember that mine has the bearing already installed. If yours doesn't, you may have an easier time placing the bearing on top of the gear shaft and then pressing the cover onto the plate. After that, it's just four screws. The extruder can now be installed back into the tool head. The screws can be tightened in any order. I'll start from the top and work my way down to the one on the right before the last one goes in by the cutting arm. Our cutting blade can now be pushed back into place. The spring may feel like it's stuck, but a little extra nudge will get the arm closed. While holding tension on the arm, I'll tighten the smaller set screw and the extruder assembly is fully reassembled. You're going to want to stick around to see what I end up printing with this, and we're on the final step. The new hot end can be pushed into the extruder. The two long screws need to be tightened firmly into the tool head. Now, simply haphazardly route the cables and reconnect them to the board. I'll drop a link to this alignment jig in the description below. This, this beautiful roll of PLA Glow is exactly why I got these hardened steel parts. Glow filament is filled with phosphorescent pigments. According to Bamboo's material safety data sheet, they only list this as additives and claims it contains between 2 and 20% of these additives. I'll go out on a limb here and assume that they're using some standard stuff, which would be a combination of strontium alumate and europium. This absorbs UV light and slowly emits that back out in the form of visible light. This stuff looks amazing, but it's also abrasive and will slowly but surely grind down any nozzle that isn't hardened steel or gemstone tipped. It can also really grind your gears. The best part of this upgrade is that you never need to switch back. Hardened steel works perfectly fine with all of your filaments so long as you set your printer parts correctly in the slicer. I originally printed two Benchy boats to try to showcase the difference in print quality between the two nozzles, though they came out perfectly identical. Even under a microscope, these prints appeared no different in terms of accuracy and quality. Both of these were printed with PLA Glow, the one on the left was printed with the old stainless steel setup, while the one on the right is the hardened steel. Aside from the classic Benchy hull line, I can't tell any real difference between the two. What kind of filaments should I try next? Carbon fiber? Glass filled? Let me know in the comments below. Big thanks to my patrons, subscribers, occasional sponsors. Stick around. I'll see you next time.